Today, we're going to talk to Evan Yu, the creator of Vue.js. We're going to learn about how he got started in web development, what he's up to today, and what he's going to be talking about at the upcoming Vue.js live conference. This video is sponsored by Git Nation. Be sure not to miss the Vue.js Live conference happening October 20th and 21st. Vue.js Live will be a remote conference with 35 speakers and more than 10,000 developers attending. There will be over 10 free and pro workshops included. You can expect to hear from authors and core teams from these amazing libraries and projects. Learn from top Vue speakers, join live chat rooms, after party, and fun activities. Discover the future of Vue and connect with other developers from around the world. Get your tickets now using the link in the description to get 20% off. Evan is uh, the creator uh, and project lead of Vue.js and Vite. Thanks for joining me again today, Evan. Um, why don't you give everyone a quick introduction? Hi everyone, uh, <clears throat> my name is Evan Yill and uh, I work on open source full time and I'm nice. currently just uh, still working on Vue and Vite, obviously. Nice, nice. <clears throat> um, so uh, give everyone a little bit of a background, like how did you get started in web development? Um, I think I, uh, the precursor to proper web development was Flash, in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, I played with Flash in middle school. I was um, maybe 13 or 14 years old, and um, but at that time I totally used it just to to make animations, not actually mm -hmm. build websites. Um, but I've always kind of Flash was the first thing that that gave me this sort of uh, the ability to create something that you can share with people. So I, I really enjoyed that. Um, but it wasn't until uh, Almost late in college, I started to actually look into programming. My undergrad has nothing to do with programming at all. Um, and um, <clears throat> after I graduated, I was in uh, I was in grad school, and um, I was in a program called uh, Master Fine Arts of Design Technology. Uh, it's a hybrid program at Parsons where uh, you do a bit of design, a bit of coding. So that was the time I start to actually uh seriously learn how to how to write code um mm -hmm. and uh that's also the time i started to look into javascript and learn how to do web development mm -hmm. uh but i'm mostly self-taught yeah. yeah i think and that that resonates with so many people like you go to college for something totally unrelated and yeah. even, even if you do go to college for you know computer science most of the stuff that you're going to learn is kind of self-taught. Like you kind of have to teach yourself along the way, some extra stuff. Yeah. You're going to learn a lot of the fundamentals, but uh, there's so much to that, especially trying to keep up with things because things are totally, yeah. you know, evolving so rapidly that you have to self-teach to keep up with everything for sure. Yeah. The thing, um, I, I took one computer science class in college just to fulfill our curriculum requirements. And uh, the course was taught in Java. And I <laughs> honestly, I hated it because uh, mm -hmm. it went straight into like how to set up your IDE, how to write mm -hmm. Java code. Everything is a class. Uh, and so you complicated. learn algorithms up front. <laughs> and to us, it was like, what's the point of like juggling lists and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, Yeah, it's, okay. it's hard when you don't see like a real world uh, application to something. It yeah. just doesn't, you know, it doesn't click. Yeah, it's you know, yeah. awesome. So what does it feel like to have created something that millions of people use every day? Uh, it's uh, it, it feels quite amazing, to be honest. Um, but at the same time, it's also a lot of pressure because you're always um, worried about uh, Because when you have so many users, you get almost bug reports or uh, just improvement ideas every day. So you realize there's no matter how many people use your thing, it's never going to be perfect. So it's going to be a always an ongoing process. So the pressure is always there, right? So um, we also kind of need to always be um, aware of what the, the new developments in the ecosystem, new platform features, new great ideas coming out of in other frameworks. Um, what can we learn? How can we improve? Um, so it's a, um, yeah, so it's, it's great um, knowing that the thing I may help a lot of people, but it's also a responsibility. Yeah. 
Well, you must be doing something right because, like, the Vue.js community is such a close and, like, tight-knit community. There's so many people that absolutely love Vue.js. So what's the secret sauce there? Like, why do people just fall in love with Vue? Um, I think one of the... I guess I don't. I won't say it's unique, but one thing that we really focus on in Vue is to making sure it's friendly to beginners. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm I'm self-taught, so when I when I built Vue, I want to make sure some people, uh, not uh, some people not as experienced as me, could easily pick it up. Uh, even you know, uh, so so make sure there's always an easy path for beginners to get into it, and then. As they grow, uh, you reveal more uh, capabilities to them. Um, the whole, the the API, the the way you view can be used, and our documentation all kind of uh, focus that quite a bit. Uh, and I think that helps building this um, sort of beginners, new users come into the view ecosystem. They feel welcome. They don't feel intimidated. Say this is some stuff that's only advanced developers can grasp. I can do this, right? So because of that. Uh, as they develop, uh, grow as a developer, they realize the framework is still there for them. It can still handle more complex cases for them. I think that creates this sort of, um, uh, they, they feel like they, they grow with the, the framework. I think that's what makes people like it. For sure. Yeah, I, I mean, in my opinion, out of all of the frameworks out there, Vue is one of the easiest to just pick up and learn. It's, it's just super easy. Um, and, then, uh, and then there's Vite. So like, mm-hmm. I absolutely love Vite. Uh, I have a crash course on Vite on my YouTube channel, okay. but like, what, 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 uh, where did Vite come from? Like, what was the origins? Why did why did you create Vite? Right. Uh, so the very very original idea of Vite was, um, I was I was playing with my personal projects, and one time I, I scaffolded it with Vue CI, which is the the Webpack based tool chain that we created. And it took like a minute to install all the dependencies. Mm-hmm. Then took like 10 seconds to spin up the dev server. And it, it just felt like a paper cut in the whole development process. And I was like, what if we can have a lighter weight weight? Because um, I've been building the Vue single file components compilation stuff. We need to integrate with Vue lo- uh, Webpack via your Vue Loader. It, it's quite complicated. Um, but at the same time, I realized, okay, so there are certain ways, like, say, what if? Um, I think the, the, the moment that I realized there could be an alternative is when I saw that native ES modules were shipped in Chrome. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, so now you can use native imports, which means you don't really need a bundler to, during development, right? Mm-hmm. But it cannot import view file, obviously. obviously. So we need a dev server. Mm-hmm. What if the dev server can intercept that import request to a view file, compile it on the fly, and send it back? Mm-hmm. Right? What would that look like? So that was the original idea. So I built this thing called View Dev Server, yeah. but it was a proof of concept. Uh, it actually worked, but um, the problem is I, I hadn't I haven't finished View Three yet at that point, mm-hmm. and also. Uh, after I finished the proof of concept, I was like, how do I do hot module replacement with this? Because you, you really want that in a large mm-hmm. application. Couldn't figure it out at that point, so I kind of put it aside and focused back on Vue 3. So after I shipped to Vue 3, uh, in fact, <laughs> I worked on Vue 3 for another few months. And then one day I was like, oh, wait, it just randomly came up. Like, he- here's maybe how you can do hot module replacement over this native VS modules pro- uh, model. Uh, so that kind of made me to go back, find out my old prototype, then hack on it for a whole night. And I got a rough hot module replacement working over native VS modules. So that became the, uh, the 0.x version of Vite. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, and, and to be honest, if it served almost like a uh, distraction or a um, an alternative outlet for me, because mm-hmm. I was working, I've been working on Vue three for a very long time at that mm-hmm. time, and I was almost burned out. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I just need something different. Uh, I still want to yeah. work, but I just want to switch the context for a bit. So V yeah. kind of became that thing. So. Um, and then I realized, oh, this thing has potential. So I spent more time on it. Yeah. And eventually so then it evolved to, yeah. to, to use other frameworks and just like it's, it's, 
it, it, it came from an, an initial need that you needed to solve. And then you realized yeah. that that need could help other people in even other frameworks. And so that's, that's just amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So let's, uh, let's switch gears here and let's talk about the, the conference. So first of all, I looked at the Vue.js London landing page and that animation, like that's the first time that I had ever seen that, that Vue animation is just amazing. Um, so definitely go check out Vue.js.London. Um, so at the conference, you're going to be speaking about the state of Vue. So what do we have yep. to look forward to at this uh, conference and the state of Vue? So, uh, so Vue 3 has been out for almost a year, but um, a lot of people... So for, for during the, the reason we did this, uh, we, we sort of did this slow rollout strategy where um, the when you go to Vue.js.org, or when you download view from npm, the default version currently is still v2. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, we want to give the ecosystem uh, the time to sort of <clears throat> adopt, uh, validate that new ideas in v3. We also want to uh, build the solid uh, ecosystem and infrastructure around it, including IDE support, TypeScript integrations, tooling integrations, which feed is part of. Um, and uh, we are finally close to the point where we are ready to say the whole ecosystem is ready. Like Vue 3, not just Vue 3 itself. Vue 3 itself was released almost a year ago. But mm -hmm. everything around it, including the router, the dev tools, the IDE integration, the testing, CLI scaffolding, build tool chain, everything, they're now ready. Uh, right. It's time for us to to confidently recommend to everyone, if you have a new project, there's no reason to go Vue 2 anymore, unless you need IE support. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, but um, <clears throat> but it's a, it's a lot of stuff that we, we finally put together into a coherent ecosystem. Uh, so I want to kind of go go through that process, how we how we got here, uh, what was what we shipped in 3.2, why it was it important, and uh, obviously looking to some of the future work that we are planning to do for the next uh, minor version. Awesome, exciting times. I can't wait to, yeah. to for the conference and to hear the, the entire talk. Um, so before we wrap up, what um, is there anything that you'd like to shout out? Anything at all? Um, yeah, uh, so definitely I want to uh, just uh, give a big shout out to every our every one of our team members, contributors who've, who've helped us build this ecosystem. Uh, Vue has long gone past this single person project. It's a collaborative effort of everyone involved to get us where we are, where we are here today. So um, including Vite as well, right? Originally it was just me, but now we have a team around Vite as well. Even nice. we ha even have team members from other frameworks representing their their usage on on the V team. So uh, mm -hmm. I think it's a that's the the beautiful part of open source is that uh, mm -hmm. you can you can grow something beyond more than just a one one person project. It's uh, it's for the community. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, open source is it's it's amazing what you can do in open source with with so many hands. Um, so that, that's awesome. So be sure to join us October twenty twentieth and twenty first at the Vue.js Live Conference. We'll see you there. See you there. Be sure not to miss the Vue.js Live conference happening October 20th and 21st. Vue.js Live will be a remote conference with 35 speakers and more than 10,000 developers attending. There will be over 10 free and pro workshops included. You can expect to hear from authors and core teams from these amazing libraries and projects. Learn from top Vue speakers, join live chat rooms, after parties, and fun activities. Discover the future of Vue and connect with other developers from around the world. Get your tickets now using the link in the description to get 20% off.